Hey guys, hope you guys are doing well. I know it's been a few weeks since I got on here. As some of you know that um, we have a newborn baby in the house. So that's been keeping me busy and it's been a wonderful blessing from the Lord, I tell you. Uh, it's just beautiful um, just seeing the baby and uh, just being there and knowing every step of the way that um, this is truly from the Lord. Uh, it's just been wonderful. Uh, so I wanted to get on here and uh, quickly share on this topic, uh, piggybacking off of my previous video. If some of you haven't watched it, please go watch it. Uh, and the last part where I cover, um, I said I would make another video, uh, whether you need works for your salvation or you don't need works, uh, what is it? You know, because there's scriptures in the Bible that, that support both sides. So we need to look at the whole picture. We need to see, um, uh, everything in context without picking and choosing and, and uh, being fair, you know, uh, in our study of the Bible and uh, seeking the Holy Spirit all throughout the way. So James 2.26 says, Faith without works is dead, uh, just as a body without spirit is dead. And James 2.24 says, For a man is justified by his works and not by faith only. So let's look into that. Uh, but before we answer that question, uh, whether we need works, uh, let's look at the three types of faith that are uh, three types of works that are found in our Bible. You know, the, the first one, it says, is um, evil works or evil deeds. You know, there are two kinds of people in this world. One is a saved person and one is an unsaved person, regenerate or ungenerate. Uh, so ungenerate person is, you know, as we were all, as we all were before we came to Jesus Christ, and we had a hole in our heart and emptiness about ourselves, we didn't have peace in our soul, and um, we were looking for love in all the wrong places, and our eyes were shut, and there was something that was lost about us, you know, that that we felt that we were lost, and. Um, so that's an ungener ungenerate person. And when you came to Jesus Christ, you became a regenerate person by accepting uh, of what Jesus did on the cross, uh, by receiving his work into your life, uh, by putting your full faith and trust in it, and uh, coming uh, to salvation and being filled with the Holy Spirit and walking your uh, relationship with him. So, you know, <clears throat> Galatians 5, 19 um, through 22, it says exactly what the the evil works are, you know. So these are works of the flesh. And, and Paul says very clearly that those who do such, like I've said before, will not inherit the kingdom of God. So let's look at those and try to break it down. Uh, Galatians 5 verse 18 um, through 22. But if ye are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variances, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, burners, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, which I tell you before, as I've told you in times past, that they which do such will not inherit the kingdom of God. So these are the deeds of the flesh. And let's look at it a little closer. What is adultery? You know, it clearly says adultery and fornication separately. So adultery means um, breaking your marriage covenant and uh, sleeping with another person. Or according to the definition of Jesus, you know, in the Gospels and what Paul said in Romans 7 and um, uh, Romans 7, um, adultery uh, can also mean uh, that if uh, you know if you are unfaithful to your first spouse, got divorced, and you got remarried again, that is not fitting in the eyes of God, and that's considered adultery, especially if your first spouse is alive. And 
and uh, and Jesus never promotes that. Okay, so adultery, uh, people who are in adultery will not inherit the kingdom of God. Fornication is premarital sex. Uh, if you're continuing in premarital sex and you call yourself a Christian, then you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Uncleanness. Uncleanness is dirty language, gossip, slander. Uh, the next thing is lewdness. Lewdness is dressing inappropriately and, you know, just being promiscuous. Idolatry. The next thing is putting anything or anyone first before God. You know, it can be your family. It can be your spouse. Uh, it can be your children. It can be the things that you like, sports, entertainment, um, anything work anything that you give more priority to than god can become an idol including worshiping statues and graven images and uh, things of that nature which almost all the religions do um sorcery sorcery means witchcraft hatred you know hate hating is you know you know hatred <laughs> lack of love uh the next thing is um contentions Contentions means heated disagreement. Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, un which means uncontrolled anger. Uh, dissensions. Dissension means a disagreement that leads to discord or lack of unity. Heresies, you know, false teachings, teachings, things that are contrary to the Bible. Envy, murder, drunkenness, and revelries. revelries. So if you do such, Paul is saying here that you will not inherit the kingdom of God because those are uh, the works of the flesh or evil deeds. And this is what it says in John chapter 3 where, you know, uh, it says that they, um, uh, let's look at it. Uh, let's turn to John chapter 3 verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light came into the world and men loved darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doth, do, uh, does evil hate the light, neither comes to the light, let his deeds be exposed. So here it's saying that wicked people, sinners, before they come to Christ, uh, the works of the flesh, they refuse to come to the light because their deeds are evil and they love their darkness more than the light. So, you know, so that covers... Uh, the, the first point here, evil works, right? And let's go into the second one. It's called um, dead works. It was not seen in the Old Testament. It was only seen for the first time in the New Testament, okay? And uh, the dead works is more deceitful than almost anything because it looks good on the outside, but, it, uh, but according to God, uh, it is evil because it comes from an evil motive or an evil heart even though your out, outward deeds look good on the outside. You know, Cain is an example of that. You know, he offered uh, his offering to God, uh, but it wasn't from a good heart. It wasn't the first fruits, you know. Um, but, Cain, uh, but Abel, on the other hand, he offered from a very loving heart towards God, offering his first fruits to the Lord, and he was pleased with that. Um, so... Another example is um, a dead work can look like a person who's uh, ha suffering with leprosy. You know, his hands are filled with uh, leprosy and he takes a, a good apple and he gives it to you to eat. And from the outside, it looks like a good gesture. You know, it, he's, he's being generous. He's helping you. But the problem is that um, his hand is filled with leprosy. And the germs are contaminating the apple. So even though it's good on the outside, would you eat that apple? No. So that's the same way with God. You know, it could be, you know, in a spiritual sense, it could be a prayer. You know, you could stand and, you know, like the Pharisees and pray these deep, eloquent prayers on the outside in public. You could sing these great worship songs on stage. Uh, you know, but uh, it's not from a pure heart. Uh, it's not that God doesn't want you to pray in public, but God, you know, just like it says in the Gospels that, you know, when you pray, go into your rooms uh, and close your door and speak to your Father in Heaven. Uh, it's not that God does not want you to pray in public, but, you know, uh, public prayer needs to be only a small fraction uh, of your true prayer life. You know, it shouldn't be the whole entirety of your prayer life. 
You know, if you don't have a devotional life and you're, you know, ministering out on the streets or preaching to people, then it's dead works. So a lot of people, you know, even in the area of giving and tithing, you know, they, they go into the area of uh, dead works because they don't give out of a generous heart. You know, in the Old Testament, you know, you were supposed to give 10 percent of your tithes to God. But in the New Testament, it doesn't necessarily specify 10 percent. Um, but uh, God is more about the quality of your giving. You know, he's more about the quality than the quantity, you know, Um in 2 Corinthians 9 7, it says, God loves a cheerful giver. So if you're going to give it out of give it uh to God or his people, do it out of love. Uh no strings attached, just do it out of a pure motive. And God loves that kind of giving, you know, and that would not be a dead work. But if you're giving it out of a duty or a sense of fear or punishment of uh or uh chastisement or uh out of re religious obligation, then that's a dead work. And let's look at Isaiah 64, verse 5. It's, there's a verse in here that says, God meets with those who rejoice in doing righteousness. So it's not just that they're doing righteousness, but they rejoice in doing so. They're happy to do righteousness. And the Lord tells the Israelites through Moses, he says, Moses said, because you didn't serve your God with joy and with a glad heart, for, for the abundance of things he has blessed you with, therefore you shall serve your enemies. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47 and 48. So it's not that they weren't serving God. They were serving God um, without any joy. There was a, a lack of joy and uh, happiness, you know, in them. So what does God want? God wants Romans 14, verse 17. It says, the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So it's, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So in other words, if you do righteousness without uh, joy, then you're not really serving the kingdom of God, uh, but instead you're uh, uh, doing legalistic requirements. A spiritual man is a man who has discerned dead works and has cleansed his heart from dead works through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why you see in uh, Hebrews 6 also says repentance from dead works, you know. So we have to repent from dead works. And uh, the thing about dead works is almost all the religions are in dead works. Um, you know, if you look at Jews, you know, they they have to do the uh, a lot of rules, you know, 613 laws, uh, Levitical priesthood laws um if you look at islam they got to pray five times a day hinduism they got to uh, not eat uh, meat especially beef uh jews uh, i mean uh mormons uh mormons jehovah witness you know they have to uh, show their allegiance to their organization in, in order to be saved uh so it's not really um salvation by grace through faith and what jesus has done but it's reliant reliance on their own works to be saved um, so almost all the religions and the one defining thing that keeps uh, Christianity different from all other religions is that uh, while you were still sinner Jesus came to die for you um, that while you were dead in your trespasses uh, God came into our world to rescue uh, and seek and save the lost you know he did it all on the cross um, so, so that's the one a differentiating thing that keeps Christianity different from all the other religions. Um, so, so we learned a dead work could mean something that's done without joy. The next thing is a dead work could also mean something that's done without love. So, God tells you know in, in Revel uh, Revelation chapter two, God ch tells the church of Ephesus that uh, they are in. Uh, he, he names a list of good deeds that they have done, like uh, discernment, uh, calling out uh, people who are not apostles uh, for what they are, um, and not tolerating evil and patiently enduring and suffering. But the one thing he holds against them is, um, he says, repent and do the deeds you did at first. What are the deeds they did at first? It says, you have left your first love. So he's saying, repent and come back to your first love. Why? Because love is the, the most important 
uh, requirement uh, for a, a new bo uh, born again Christian uh, living in the new covenant. Okay, uh, let's look at Ro Romans chapter 13. Uh, Love fulfills the law, verse 8. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. So love is the fulfillment of the law. So when you're walking in love, Jesus said the first, the two most important commandments is to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So when you obey those two commandments, you have, in essence, uh, obeyed the entirety of the, the Ten Commandments. You know, you have fulfilled uh, the Ten Commandments because all the Ten Commandments fits into those two uh, laws, you know, and it's the law of love. And if you look at First Corinthians 13, it's all about love. You know, you can speak in spiritual tongues, you can prophesy, you can do a lot of things and speak in the tongues of angels. Doesn't matter. If you don't have love, it's like a clanging symbol. So, so it has to be from a pure heart towards God and towards others from a heart of love. And um, even Galatians, you know, uh, Galatians, um, Galatians uh, 5, 6, it says, uh, it's the, you know, the, the important thing is not whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised, but it's faith working through love. So, so what are we trying to get here, guys? First thing is putting your faith and trust on what Jesus has done, right? Not on your own dead works, not on what uh, you can bring because they're all considered filthy rags uh, in God's eyes. So putting your faith and trust on the perfect work that was done on the cross. Uh, and then the second part is once you're saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, he wants you to do works of righteousness, you know. Um, and uh, that's what Ephesians uh, 2, 6 through 8 says, you know, a lot of people know Ephesians 2 verse 6, which says, you're, uh, for by grace you're saved and not by works, so that no man shall boast. Uh, but they don't, they have never read the next verse. Many of them have never even seen the next verse. So God has preordained for you certain good works that once you come to faith in Jesus Christ, that you are supposed to uh, fulfill your call, fulfill your destiny in your life. And that we see the same thing in Titus 2, you know, uh, that God wants a, a people set apart, um, peculiar people set apart, zealous for good works. And that's uh, Titus 2, verse um, 14. So he wants the people zealous for good works. And that's the third, third thing that we're going into. The, thir the first thing we said was uh, evil works, evil deeds. Number two, uh, dead works. And number three is good works. Um, and Jesus also said, you know, uh, let your light so shine before all men so that they might see uh, your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. So when you work, uh, walk out your calling, when you listen to the Holy Spirit, uh, when you obey Jesus Christ uh, as a Christian, um, you are shining the light of Jesus Christ uh, before their very eyes. Um, so let's look into Matthew uh, 10 verse 48. Jesus said, even if you give somebody a glass of water, uh, you know, you will by no means not receive your reward. I will reward you, is what Jesus is saying. So even giving a glass of water counts in the kingdom of God. So with that said, um, let's go into the main topic here. J James 2, you know, do you need faith? Do you need works? So first thing, like I said, you need faith. And second thing, a faith in Jesus Christ. Um, and the second thing is you need works as a result of your salvation. So let's look into James 2 verse 14 through um, 25. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So it's saying here, you know, you see somebody and uh, they came to you, can you please help me? Uh, I'm in the cold. I need... I'm hungry. Uh, and you just say, stay warm, uh, uh, be filled, you know, uh, and you, you don't give that person anything. Uh, that's not a true faith. You know, that's not love. You know, that's not helping uh, a neighbor in need. 
Um, so that kind of faith is useless, is what it's saying here. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can, uh, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith for you believe that there is one God good for you. Even the demons believe that uh, and they tremble. How foolish. Can you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Can you see that faith without works is dead? Is what it's saying. Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. So, you, you know, uh, when God tells Abraham, uh, you know, I'm going to bless you, I'm, and solemnly picks him and blesses him, Abraham believed it. And he tells him, depart from your father's land. I'm going to bless you and make you make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and uh, the sand of the seashore. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to multiply you. Uh, God solemnly picks him and Abraham believes that. And that is credited to him as righteousness. But later you see that God tests that faith and he tells him, hey, Abraham, go sacrifice your son. Uh, put him on the altar for me. And Abraham was obedient even to lay down his only son uh, on the altar. And that is the work. And when he did that, God uh, init uh, finalizes his initial blessing and blesses him. So that's what it, say it says right here, guys. It's saying, uh, you see his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. So, you know, the first part is faith in Jesus Christ and what he has done. Part two is work. You know, you're working for the Lord. You're working in the kingdom of God. Uh, you're, you're being led by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 says, uh, for there is therefore now no condemnation uh, for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And it also says in another verse, it says those who are led by the spirit are called the sons of God. So he wants you to be led by the spirit doing the deeds that are pleasing to the Holy Spirit and not the deeds that are pleasing to your old life or your old flesh. And so it happened, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteousness because of his faith. He was even called a friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God, but we are justified by works and not by faith alone. So, you know, everybody always says faith alone, faith alone, faith alone, faith alone. And that's the, the it's almost like the mantra, you know. But the only person, uh, the only place in the Bible that you see faith alone is actually in a scripture most people don't want to read, you know. And it says, for a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. So your works uh, complete uh, uh, a true faith. And here we see another example. Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as a body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. So, you know, if you look at a body and it doesn't have uh, life in it, it doesn't have uh, breath in his, uh, in his lungs or in his nostrils, it's a dead body. And God is saying, you know, you say you have faith, but you don't have works to show that faith. You're, uh, you're equal to a body without breath. It's dead. It's dead, guys. So, so that's what, you know, James 2, uh, 226 says, you know, faith without works is dead, you know, so... So you, th these are not the works of the evil works. These are not your dead works. Uh, these are works that you do once you come to salvation and once you have a relationship with the Lord. Uh, and there and and the Bible is clear. All those deeds after you know that the righteous deeds have a reward in heaven. You know God will not uh, for forget you and uh, for or forget all the all the things that you have done for Him in the kingdom of God. No. God is a diligent rewarder uh, of those who seek Him. And, and He is a rewarder 
of those who do good deeds for the kingdom of God. So these, so do you need works for salvation? No, you don't need works uh, for your salvation. You need works as a result of your salvation. Uh, and with that, I would like to end with a quote um, by Sir William Booth, you know, the founder of the, the Salvation Army. He said, I consider the chief dangers which confront the coming century will be religion without the Holy Ghost, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, salvation without regeneration, politics without God, and heaven without hell. And wow, guys, we are there. He said this 150 years ago, you know, uh, in the 1800s or in the early 1900s. And uh, we are here, you know, many people have a dead faith. They don't have works to show their salvation. Uh, there is no transformation once they come to uh, saving faith. Many of them have an opinion that, yes, Jesus is the Savior and he died for me, but they don't have a true relationship and faith working through love, and they don't have the true love of God uh, that, that rises up inside of them that wants to love God more than everything else in this world. Uh, and as a result, the transformation takes place in their heart and in their outside life. Uh, and, um, you know, if you look at a lot of Christianity now, there's not a mention of Jesus Christ, you know, and uh, and no regeneration. And uh, and a lot of people don't even believe in hell anymore. I think the statistics are 60 percent or so of the people don't even believe in hell. So uh, I don't want to make this too long. Uh, I pray that it blessed you. Uh, uh, see you in the next video or in the air. Uh, take care. God bless.